Bit of a long one this week, but stick around and you might find some of this information useful on fuel system diagnosis. Customer complaint was loss of power and engine warning on hills when loaded. And as you can see, fault codes P9004 and 228D are typical fuel related DTCs. So, before we go working on this fuel system, especially a tipper, I'm going to clean off the fuel system components so we have half a chance of testing in a clean environment. The leak off kit required for testing is as shown. This can be made up yourself if you don't have access to DAF equipment, as I know JAL test lists these system tests also. We have to bypass the fuel return from the pressure control valve on the fuel rail into one container to be able to measure the return flow. And this one here, which is the fuel return from the injectors on the side of the cylinder head, which also flows into another container. The first system test we will run is a basic injector leak off test. As you can see, I've connected the pipes as shown in the diagram. The test will ask you to start the vehicle and the software program will increase the fuel pressure to the maximum effort at 25,000 bar. Basically, stress the fuel system to its maximum. Best to do this on a hot engine as I find it gives a more consistent result. The main thing we're looking for here is one, the low pressure fuel system needs to be six bar at idle and eight bar at 1200 RPM which means the low pressure fuel system is good from the tank, the gauze filter in the hand primer and the low pressure fuel pump are in a serviceable condition. What we really need to concentrate on is the correctional value of the fuel pump units. And if you've got a fuel system that is correcting anything over zero, the fuel pumps are compensating for loss of fuel pressure by overworking themselves, hence the correctional value. As you can see on the graph, between 10 and 28 seconds where the fuel system has been maxed out at 25,000 bar, my correction was 20% plus, so somewhere in the fuel system we have an excessive fuel leak off. With one jug empty which was from the fuel rail pressure sensor, this shows us the fuel pressure sensor isn't leaking off and the other jug containing fuel from the cylinder head. We can measure this and usually identify which injectors are passing fuel and from there blank off injectors to identify which injector needs changing. But, to my surprise, this vehicle returned near perfect fuel results from the injectors. Do you reckon that is? So it's not the injectors causing our large correctional value. So with this done, we will now have to test the actual fuel pump units themselves. These are designated L92 and L93 on the MX-11 and MX-13 engine. This has its own fuel pump camshaft in an MX-11, which I'll talk about later on. With Davey now running the fuel pump unit test, this is a longer duration test than the other injector leak off test, so we are presented with a larger quantity of fuel, which I'm not concerned about at the moment. I just want to make sure both fuel pump units are delivering fuel. Which, as you can hear, they aren't. Punk start. So now we've gone from simple fuel pump swapping to possibly engine rebuilds. Time to get the tools out and get more invasive. With a construction chassis, the engine is mounted lower in the frame, which means we have to get the airbox and the cab mounts off before we can get to the fuel pump unit. I'm planning on swapping the fuel pump unit over to check it's the fuel pump unit, not the camshaft that's at fault. It's very rare for an MX-11 engine to have a camshaft failure. With the airbox and cab mounts now loose, I can get the apprentice to help me get this off the vehicle and get the engine cowling and various fuel pipes and bolts removed that are blocking me from getting to the fuel pump units. While I'm taking these bits off, I'll give you an explanation of the fuel pump units. The internal plunger on the fuel pump unit is actuated via a roller tappet on the camshaft which are kept in line with a guide bolt. Each pump unit has three pump events every two crankshaft revolutions and this is timed up accordingly on the camshaft. Fuel is pumped through the fuel unit pump to the rail via a shut-off valve in the outlet bore of the pump unit. These shut-off valves can go faulty and cause fuel to flow back through the pump unit, which is a common fault on these, but on the next generation DAF they've modified this and added a spring-loaded shut-off valve due to this issue. 
The fuel pump unit bolts are not removed completely, but halfway, as this will become more clear when you hear the fuel pump units finally come out of the block. They're under extreme pressure from the fuel pump camshaft, so keeping in the retaining bolts prevents the fuel pump units that taking off. Gone. That's jumped. When I'd finally managed to get the fuel pump units out, I noticed the cam follower hole on the left was slightly off. I had originally planned to confirm my fuel pump unit diagnosis by swapping the fuel pump units round and running the test again, but upon manoeuvring the follower, it rotated right round in the bore. I've started stripping the compressor cylinder head off to gain access to the guide bolt to check what condition the follower is in. Which is easier said than done on this vehicle. If it's just the guide bolt snapped, we can check the follower by pulling it out and checking the cam lobe from the top. The fuel pump camshaft followers are held in position with a guide pin to keep the cam follower roller in contact with the cam lobe. It's now dawning on me that this isn't going to be a quick repair if the follower doesn't come out the top. We'll need to remove the sump, gearbox, clutch, flywheel, timing cover and drop what's left of the fuel pump follower out the bottom to check the bore in the block. Oh, fuck. Missing in it. Oh. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Well, the cam follower wasn't for coming out the top, so the inevitable happened and the engine had to be stripped down. Well, the camshaft had seen better days, and the follower, well, it came out in kit form. But with minimal damage to the block internal bore surface, we were able to replace all these parts and the fuel pump unit injector, and get it all retimed and rebuilt.